Beveridge, you've been seeing something of New Zealand in the last few weeks as a visitor to these shores. What are your principal impressions? You New Zealanders have always been great pioneers in taming nature. Uh, what you've done in this beautiful but wild and rugged country of yours in the past hundred years is a miracle. Equally, you've been great pioneers of social advance, often ahead sometimes just behind the Britons in Britain. Uh, there are two new tasks in particular which seem to me to call today for the application of your New Zealand pioneering spirit. Uh, one is the vital problem of peace. How can we establish lasting peace in the world? Until we do so, none of us can really have good peace of mind. The other problem is quite different, but only a little less important. It's the problem of how we can reduce the hours of work for the ordinary housewife in her home. For a good many years now, we in Britain, and I think you also in New Zealand, have concentrated rather too much on how to improve con conditions of life for people who work for pay in factories, offices, shops, and so on. We've given them higher wages, shorter hours, better conditions. But the most important work in the world isn't done for pay. It's the work of the housewife in her home the danger is that if we don't solve this problem, if we don't somehow give to the housewife improvements of working conditions uh, comparable to what we have given to everyone else, we shall find that we don't get the children that we need and ought to have. <laughs> After a period of 22 years inactivity, Arahoe suddenly burst into violent eruption, and the usual mantle of snow has been replaced by volcanic ash. Rising to a height of 10,000 feet, the smoke column is carried by a southwesterly breeze over the Taupo district, and the surrounding country is showered with ash. Despite the present spectacular display of steam, smoke, and ash, there's been no lava flow, the last one occurring as far back as 1869. <laughs> Cathedral Square, Christchurch, the heart of what is known as New Zealand's most English city in the province of Canterbury, founded in 1850 by Robert Godley. The present mayor, Mr. Andrews, asks the people to support the Aid for Britain campaign. Demonstrations are given of various types of farm machinery. People help by donating cash and a total of 22,000 food coupons. The tramways assist by delivering food parcels to the main depot. And in three days, Christchurch contributes 160 cases of foods for the people of Britain. With the help of two of his sons, a veteran Waikato farmer drives a flock of sheep out of one of his paddocks at Taiuku near Hamilton. With 19 pounds in his pocket, Bill Lusty landed in New Zealand from Gloucestershire 40 years ago. When he took this land, it was a heartbreaking mass of bush and scrub. But with his own hand, he turned the wasted acres into the ideal farm it is now.
today they're driving out the sheep for a special purpose, to show them to the students of a course for returned servicemen farmers being conducted by the Rehabilitation Board. To these men, Bill Lusty is willingly passing on that knowledge those years of hard work and experience have brought him. And 30 miles away at Narawahia, A.T. Rogers is showing another group of students over his pedigree piggery, one of the finest in the Southern Hemisphere. During their fortnight's course, they're visiting all types of farms and hearing the opinions of some of the Waikato's best farmers. But instruction is not all they're getting. In the heart of the Waikato, near Mangakino and Moraitai, the rehab board is having thousands of acres of virgin land converted into farms for them. In the midst of all this emptiness, men are working on their behalf, crushing and burning the great expanses of scrub and plowing, rolling and planting grass. Here will soon be some of the best farmlands in the North Island. The land is already being divided up into farms, 130 acres in each. But for internal subdivision, only three stranded Dannet fences can be provided, so desperate is the nationwide shortage of wire. Before the grass can thrive on this pumice land, consolidation by heavy stocking with run cattle is necessary. Each farm, together with a house, stock and equipment, will go under the terms of a loan to a returned serviceman who has satisfied the board that he can farm it efficiently and get the best results from it. And while the cattle are helping to get the land into condition for them, the students are hearing from such men as Cecil Bones of Rukahia about the best ways of feeding and caring for their own cattle. New Zealand's future prosperity is in the hands of men like this. The old timers like Bill Lusty who are showing them the way started from nothing. Returned men are having their prosperity ensured for them right from the beginning. Whether they are also inheriting that true wisdom and love of the land without which the old farmers could never have won through remains to be seen. They have the farms, the stock, the money, the knowledge and above all, the youth. The rest is up to them. Mm -hmm.